Hey guys and welcome to the channel. My name is Elizabeth and today I wanted to share one of the best hacks or the underrated tips to get rich and to get wealthy at any time but in 2024. And so this is simply to act like you're poor. So if you make $200,000, don't spend that much and start living below your means and start paying yourself a big percentage of your income. This seriously is so, so important. And it doesn't matter how much you make. You can make $50,000 a year. You can make $250,000 a year. You can make a million dollars a year, but you need to live below your means and act like you're poor for a little bit. Do you have to act like you're poor forever? No, but this has been huge in how my husband and I have been able to save and invest so such a huge amount of money just by being teachers currently. And it is incredible. And so I'm going to share some tips on this that could hopefully help you to act poor and to build a ton of wealth for yourself. And then eventually you can live that rich and that free life that you want to. All right. So some tips to do this. The first thing is to live with other people. This is so essential. It doesn't matter what age you are, but if you want to live with your parents, if you want to live with roommates, if you want to house hack and purchase a place, but then have um, a duplex or something where then other people can help pay for your rent or your mortgage. This is huge. And so one of the biggest expenses in people's lives is their mortgages and their living expenses. And so if you can house hack, if you can live with other people for a little bit longer, if your parents have enough space or they're willing to keep you there. Um, maybe you can arrange a deal. You could pay them and that could help them as out as well. A lot of people I know have roommates to help cut down the cost. Like maybe you want to live in the city and you're young, but it's a little expensive, but you want that nightlife and that experience and just being in the vibrant city and the opportunities that are there, then you can live with other people. And so this is a huge thing to do and to consider. And I know it's helped my husband and I and my family in my life. Number two, take a period of time, decide this period of time and just grind and sacrifice. And so you'd be surprised what you could do if you're willing to go six months, we're going to cut back on this or we're not going to do this and we're going to just go for it and try to build money. For example, I didn't buy clothes for like two or three years. Um, maybe I bought one or two pieces, but I didn't buy a ton of clothes and I had plenty and it was fine. Honestly, I love it. I was really into minimalism, but then I also like, have you ever seen where Jeff Bezos or certain people, Mark Zuckerberg, I believe is who does it, wears the same thing every day. It's not the exact same thing, but say you buy six pairs of the same jeans or three of the same shirts or whatever, it reduces decision fatigue, but it also you can spend a ton of money on clothes. Now, if you want to spend money on clothes, that's fine. I actually really used to love fashion and I would love to get more into it again, but it was a great hack. It was easy. I knew I just picked what I wanted to wear. I knew it fit. I knew it looked okay and I was fine. I didn't spend all this extra time with trying to find all these extra clothes. And I also didn't spend the extra money. I also didn't spend the time shopping. And so it really was a great thing. And I actually grown to really love it, but where can you sacrifice for a short period of time? Like, does that have to be forever? No, it could if you want it to be, but where can you sacrifice and save or use hand-me-downs or things of that nature for a short period of time so that eventually you're in a better place and then you can go live how you want? Number three, so acting like you're poor. So see how much you can spend. You make $200,000 a year after taxes, don't spend that. Go, I'm going to save 20% of that. I'm going to pay myself 50% of that. It depends on what goals you have and what the living expenses are. Or if you have roommates or things of that nature, how much can you actually save? And so really get clear on that. And do you have to, does this have to be your way of life? Like not necessarily, but it depends on your goals. If you want to work forever, then that's fine. Or if you want to stay at the job that you want to, and you know, this is your dream job, you're willing to do it for 30, 40 years, then go for it. Buy a bigger house, do more. But a lot of people don't want to do that, or they'd rather have more time with their kids, or they would rather go invest in their own company or a different project. And so just be mindful with how much you spend is going to limit your choices. If you spend more, you're not going to have as much money to do more with that can grow more money and ultimately buy you time and freedom, which is what I have found and what I've wanted for myself is that choice, that freedom and that ability to do what you want. And most people are really stuck because they don't have that choice. So it's up to you choose now or choose later.
Number four, there's a ton of research on gamification. And so making things a game, whether you're trying to have people have better behavior, whether you are trying to achieve a big goal, gamify it, make it fun. Like I used to love getting to see that money. Oh yeah, $250 in my investment account. Let's go. And then seeing how it would go up or seeing if I could find different ways to save or make more money. It was super fun. So how can you make it a game? How can you make it more fun and exciting? This is a great productivity hack as well. Ali Abdal talks about this in his new book, Feel Good productivity. You want it to feel good, right? I don't want this to be so painful, right? I don't want to wish this upon everybody that they just have to scrimp and save for the rest of their lives. But maybe it's a short period of time and maybe you can enjoy it. Like maybe if you were used to getting and getting a lot of stuff in your life and then you live below your means, you really appreciate things more. So there's lots of gifts in this, but um, make it feel good and gamify it, make it fun. Number five, something that's helped me is to run the calculation. And so if you want to live a certain type of life, right, you decide the life you want to live and then see what it's going to take to get there. Run the calculation. If I save, if I live below my means, if I act like I'm poor for a little bit, what am I going to get later? I know we are not guaranteed another day. And so a lot of people just want to live in the moment, but hopefully we're all guaranteed a beautiful long life and you will live a beautiful long life. So you do want to prepare for it. At least that's my belief. And so it's really important to do that and to decide that you have enough time. And so run the calculation and say, if I save for this amount of time, or if I invest this much every single month, and I live below my own means that I'm going to get here and decide if that's worth it to you or not. So run those calculations, actually crunch the numbers. Um, it can be a huge, huge tool in your life to actually take a look at it. Number six is to decide what you value and what you want. And so a lot of times we're just shown the American dream or we're shown what life we should live or we see how our parents lived and we either go, I don't want to live like that or yeah, that's really cool. I really liked how I grew up. But then you have to decide what do you actually want? Do you want peace of mind? Do you want to live in a nice area? Do you want to be stressed? Do you want to have to actually spend time with your kids? What do you want? And then you can design your life according to that. And then you can choose to spend your money according to those guidelines and values that you have. Number seven, I kind of talked about this a minute ago, but life isn't guaranteed, but prepare as if it is. And so you really want to prepare. Do you want to work your whole life? Do you want to be 80 and you still have to work? Now, if you want to, that's great. I'm all about designing a life that I don't want to retire from and that I am actually doing the things that I just would do for free and that I do anyways. And so that is a really good tip. A lot of people think work is bad, but work that you don't enjoy or feeling constrained and controlled or not having options and flexibility, that's what feels bad. But work and work that you enjoy and work that you're passionate about actually is one of the best gifts. And we're made to work. We're made to do things and to serve and to give back and to build and create. And so find that for yourself. It truly is such a gift and a game changer. Number eight, consider adopting minimalism or some minimalism principles or essentialism. So what do you need? Go look in your house and see if there's a bunch of things that you don't use or is it causing mental stress? Is it causing clutter? Do you even have you even seen it in a couple of years? If not, then get rid of it. And so have that abundance mentality that more can come to you. I know a lot of times it's like, oh, we're so blessed to have this or I just want a bunch of stuff or it makes me feel good. But does it actually make you feel good? Is it causing stress? I know for me, I loved having things more simple and actually using everything that we had in our house. It was such a blessing. I felt more clear. It was so much easier to clean up. We didn't have as big of messes. And so I honestly highly recommend this. And then you're not spending money excessively. It doesn't mean you can't spend money. I would buy things intentionally. And then I'd also not feel bad if I'm ready to get rid of it or give it to somebody else who could benefit from it. And so minimalism, um, it can be very extreme. There's always both sides of the spectrum, but find, I think adopting a healthy dose of it can really be beneficial for most people. Number nine, another thing that's really helped me was to eat more at home. I don't really eat out. We are fortunate to have a few gift cards and I love eating at Chipotle every once in a while, um, but otherwise I mostly just eat at home. It makes me feel good. I know what I like. It's simple and I just like it. Another thing is eating similar things. And so having a diverse amount of plant foods, like maybe 30 different types is actually really good for your gut health. But if you want to eat the same breakfast, have oatmeal, have a sandwich for lunch, have, you know, I don't know, a soup or something for dinner, like eat the same things. 
have the same smoothie every day, whatever. The more simple you can make it, the less ingredients you have to buy and the less things you have to buy. So staying at home is a big part of it, but also be mindful of what you're actually purchasing as well. And keeping things simple for me, that's helping with my time. I don't fuss about making big meals. I don't fuss about, I don't spend a ton of time doing it. I actually know what I makes me feel good and what I enjoy. And so I just buy it and I do it. It's so easy and it's truly a big thing that I don't really think about, but I think if I think about how other people do things, it's really impacted my life and makes a huge difference. Number 10. So right now, maybe live below your means in terms of entertainment. And so be okay with doing less. Be okay with being creative with what you're doing for a short period of time. Find the ent entertainment that you actually enjoy and be willing to invest in those things. I know for us, we really do like experiences. And so there's certain things that we're like, oh, we don't need to do that. But then other things that we definitely invest in and we're like, let's go do that experience, et cetera. But especially if you are really trying to save money um, or live below your means, and maybe it's not something that is interesting in you, to you, like find people that understand that. And then if people don't understand, be okay being that lone wolf and just making that choice for yourself. No one has to live your life for you. And so true friends and people would understand. Now, if it is something that you really want to do, go do it. Give yourself permission. Like I said, we aren't guaranteed another day. And so you do want to let yourself live a little bit, but also if you're just going out every single night, then that's not going to help your goals. All right, so now that you've saved all this money and that you're living below your means, what do you do with it? And so make sure you invest it. Make sure you make your money work for you. Make sure that you invest in your education, your skills, um, or take risks depending on your age and where you are and your goals for your life. And so invest that money, use that money. The goal is to not just scrimp and save forever or to live that type of lifestyle. A lot of millionaires and wealthy people are frugal to some extent, but it doesn't mean they're cheap and it doesn't mean they never do anything. Just choose to be intentional and invest that money in where you actually want it to go and it will truly help you so much. All right, so that's the biggest underrated hack that I think can really help you is to act poor. And then I gave you some tips on how to do so. I hope they were helpful for you. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you have any ideas that could help everybody else. Feel free to like and subscribe for more. I'm so grateful you're here and I hope this video and this channel is helpful for you and feel free to follow for more. Bye guys, you got this. Keep learning, working, and growing.